Hey, I'm gonna tell you about a dream that I had uh, probably in January. Uh, that's the best date I can get um, based on text and emails and stuff that I was sharing this dream with other friends. Um, I've told friends that live around here and uh, where I live and uh, I think this needs to get out more than it is and uh, hearing that I need to get it out. So let me first start with a prayer. Heavenly Father in your holy and precious name I just ask that this this video go out and reach the people that it needs to reach Lord. I'm doing this in total submission of what you told me to do and I'm just expecting it to reach the ears that need to hear it and the hearts that are open to receive it. And I thank you Lord for the uh, prophetic, prophetic dream that you gave me and uh, even the way that you <laughs> Even the way that you confirmed it was uh, pretty amazing, but I'll explain that to the people watching the video later. In your holy and precious name, and in your Son, Jesus Christ, my Savior and my Redeemer's name, amen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start, and I'll, I'll tell you very interestingly that I had this very odd dream, and... This dream occurred twice. Not only did it occur twice, but it also occurred, and each time I woke up, it was 2.22 in the morning. 2.22, 2.22, strange. Didn't think much of it at the time other than it being very kind of preposterous, but... Uh, as I delve, as I, as I went along and uh, gained more knowledge, uh, I feel like I need to give you an introduction to this information first before I tell you about the actual dream. But uh, I looked up, you know, what does the number 222 mean in the Bible? And I looked it up on the internet, on Google, on Strom's. Strong's Dictionary. I'm sorry, Strong's Concordance. And uh, 222 is, is the number that represents firstborn blessing. Now, you're not going to know me from Adam. You don't have to believe me. I don't, you know, I, I don't have a reason to make this other than to tell the truth. But uh, I'm the firstborn of my son, or of my family, firstborn. So 222, waking up two nights in a row, that was, that was kind of odd. I mean, 222, firstborn blessing, okay? Someone could read something from that, possibly. And then I get on Google and I said, hmm, I wonder what, it, does it mean anything if it happens twice? You know, odds of it happening twice and two nights in a row, back to back? So I got on Google and, and I looked it up and, and I said, I typed in, what does it mean in the Bible if God shows you something twice? And it came back, and the answer was, for me anyway, when I typed it in, I mean, everyone gets different answers. But when I typed it in, it came back as confirmation. So this dream that I had in January, um, Two, two nights in a row, both waking up at 222, 222 being the number for firstborn blessing. I'm the firstborn in my family, and God showed it to me twice, two nights in a row. And his number for, you know, showing validation or putting his stamp on it, his approval, two times. That's his confirmation. And I, I, I'll start telling you the dream now. But I'm kind of standing out in a field, kind of sort of, kind of trying to stay out of the sun because I'm bald-headed, so I uh, don't want to burn my head. 
hopefully you can see my face well enough. Uh, first night I, I fell asleep. I was sleeping very peacefully and uh, I started dreaming. I had a very vivid dream, very vivid. And I'm very artistically inclined. I can draw paint, whatever, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, in the distance, I saw Memphis, Tennessee. And I know Memphis because I've been there several times. And I know the skyline. I know the uh, area down there uh, <laughs> where, the, where the Blue Street is. Uh, more properly known as Bill Street. But also, uh, I know where the pyramid is. I've been in the uh, museum down there. I've, I've seen, you know, that area. I'm, I'm familiar with it. But it was like I was standing in, in a field similar to this. But this field was, it might have been waist high in uh, wheat or something like that with, with wild pretty flowers mixed in with it and I'm standing in here and I'm just slightly elevated above the city I can see down see the skylight uh, even see hotels that I've stayed in before past visits and I start noticing these taller buildings start swaying and they start going down and I start hearing a enormous cracking noise it's unlike anything I've ever heard. And these buildings, one by one, started falling into this gaping chasm. Huge. Each one of them falling, 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 like dominoes, one after the other. And I can see it still. I, I close my eyes. I, I still see all the imagery. And... I even noticed that it, this, this chasm was so deep that the Mississippi River was flowing into it like a waterfall. I mean, this thing, this was a deep chasm. And, you know, it, it, it would have frightened most people. It would have frightened me in the natural probably if I'd have seen it, but not after the dream. Uh... But in the dream, I remember seeing all that destruction and all this whole city's being sucked into this chasm. I'm telling how many lives were being lost at that very second. But yet here I was in this peaceful field watching this devastation down here. And I noticed the cracks started coming my way. The chasm started opening and it started coming my way. And, you know, the first thing you do would be like, oh, run. Uh, let me tell you something. This chasm was wide enough. I don't think you could put any bridge over it. I don't believe the Golden Gate Bridge would go over it. Uh, there was no way to run, nowhere to hide. You know, you can't escape it. It's kind of ironic. We've got... Uh, emergency vehicles going on behind in the sirens. I don't know if you can hear them. But this crack, this chasm started coming my way. And instead of slowly cracking, it buckled and just split wide open. And here I am for a minuscule second. I mean millisecond. I was, I didn't look down, but I knew that the ground had completely went away. And I, I kind of had enough per peripheral vision that I saw that there was no getting out of this one. It was the edge was far to my right and the edge was far to my left. And I knew that straight down was sudden destruction. And the first thing that I uttered out of my mouth was Yeshua Hamashiach. And for those of you that don't know, Yeshua HaMashiach is Jesus Christ's name in his native tongue, Hebrew. And I said that, 
And the moment I said that, even though there was no ground that I was standing on anymore, and I knew that I was going to plummet, but the moment I said said that in the pra- in the dream, I'm sorry, uh, the I felt these two hands hands come underneath my armpit, okay, and they grabbed my rib cage and picked me up. And carried me up into that sky up there and took me away from that 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 chasm that I was gonna be falling into and it and it took me to safety now am I saying that it took me to heaven was this a rapture dream I don't know I woke up then I woke up after being carried up so my last recollection of the dream was being carried up but there's power in the name. Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. The name above all names. He's the King of King and the Lord of Lords. He's coming in that sky one day. He's going to judge all the nations. He's going to judge everyone. Don't be one of those that are judged bad don't be a bad fruit and I say that very humbly just trust in the Lord I'm telling you uh, I'll tell you another thing real quick I didn't look it up on the on the uh, in the Bible and I should have before I came out of here but this was I don't know if I'll use this video or not. This was a, a trial video first uh, to see some settings, see how the lighting looked and all that. Uh, see if I got my point across. But, uh, you know, in the Bible, it actually says that God sets the boundaries of countries. God himself does. And is <laughs> a tears going off my cheek um, he also says that if you mess with my Israel you yourself will be split and there's whispering out there that I'm picking up on the internet that there has been a peace, a peace accord, peace treaty of giving land to the Palestinians land that Palestine is not even a country why don't the Arab countries take them in? I don't know. Anyway, I think it was all set up just to bring God's wrath. And it's it's sad that that's the case. But, uh, you know, he, he establishes perimeters. He establishes where a country is. And he sets those boundaries. And he specifically says in his word, anyone who comes against Israel splits Israel he himself will split and I have a dear friend that has had a prophetic vision of Los Angeles going and, you know that whole area and Yellowstone's getting hotter I mean people have died there in the news you all you have to do is watch the news. I mean, they're not even telling you half the stuff. A lot of the stuff you find on YouTube. And uh, you kind of wake up and you realize there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. This isn't the normal years of just 10 years ago. This is very, very dire straits. But it's going to be a domino effect. I'm telling you this right now. I know it. When Los Angeles goes, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Yellowstone blows. And then it, the New Madrid is going to split. I'm telling you this. I saw it. I was there. The Lord spared my life because I called up his thing. I might not have been there physically. But in the dream, I was there. I saw what happened. I saw the destruction. 
And that chasm, that, that, that great void got so big that I couldn't see buildings anymore. By the time that that chasm had got to me, it was, it was wide open. And go look, go look up the Navy map. I mean, this isn't a subconscious thing going on. I mean, having, having that dream two nights in a row, sequential nights, waking up exactly to roll over it, to look at the clock at 222, firstborn blessing, and I'm the firstborn in my family. That's, that's his work. That's not man's work. But go his way. Trust in him. Don't have fear. Because in him is healing. In him is power. In him is peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And he will protect you. He says that he even puts his angels in charge of you. But you have to believe and you have to call on him first. So, in Jesus' precious name, Yeshua HaMashiach, I just pray protection on you and your family. And I pray that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. So that when that time comes, when it you have nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, he will be your your provider. He will be your shelter. He will be your wings if you need to fly. That's all I have to say. I love all of you. Even people out there I don't even know. Sorry. I'm a so biggie but a softie. Um, but I wanted to get out in this field and kind of, you know, I was looking straight at it. You know, I was even watching the direction that the water was flowing. And, you know, Memphis was straight ahead of me and just all went into a hole. Completely dumped. The whole thing. So, uh, God be with every one of you. And trust in the Lord. These are the end days. And He will come and He will judge every nation and every person. And He will start with the church. Because we've got some answering to do too. Some of our pastors haven't done what He's called them to do. So, there's going to be there's going to be some Bent knees, but I pray blessings on you and protection. In Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.